Welcome to Midwest Sports Net. I'm Joey McWilliams. It's a privilege today to be joined on the summit by Jenna Cooper from Wayland Baptist, who put together quite a stat line a little bit earlier this week. Jenna, a triple double and an 83 40 to victory at Oklahoma Panhandle State. And it's a it was a nice stat line, too. I mean, a, a pretty even all the way across the board. 11 11 11. Congratulations on the triple double. Thank you so much. Listen, I, I have to ask, I, I know that, you know, you're out there playing, you're working hard, but it's it, it was a, a good-sized win. You were able to come away with a 40-plus point victory. Late in the game, as, as you're out there, did you have any idea about where you were numbers-wise, or did any of those things come to mind? Um, so, usually my goal before I go into a game is to get a double-double with rebounds and points. Um, I've been close a few times for that triple-double, but I've never really, like, went for it as like a goal. And uh, I kind of knew at halftime that I had seven rebounds and seven points. And then I had six assists. So I was like, okay, maybe I can get it. But we were up by so much that I wasn't going to try to force it. And then um, at the end of the game, I was kind of curious. We went to the locker room and I had a triple double and two of my other teammates had double doubles. So our coach kind of announced that. And I was really proud of myself. Um, It was kind of it was, it was good that um, we had a ton of people get double-doubles, triple-doubles and stuff. So I, I was aware, but not trying to push it. Well, the Flying Queens, obviously a, a fantastic uh, a team anyway around 11-1 and on the season right now, number six in the country. You know, it's interesting, too, because uh, so far this season, 11 points, that's your lowest point output. Uh, smallest amount of scoring, but you were able to get things done other than that. And, and congratulations to, to your teammates as well with the double doubles. You've had your share of those two really, uh, you know, numbers, uh, you're no stranger to big numbers. You have quite a resume over the years and, and not just college, but high school as well. You, you've done a fantastic job through, through your time playing the sport. Have you ever had something like this before? Have you had, had a triple double before? When I was in high school, I had a few, um, I've, I think maybe I had five my senior year, not anything special, but this was my first college triple double. So, well, Hey, listen, I, anytime you get a triple double, I don't care what it is. I think, I think that's pretty special any way <laughs> around, but high school as well. And of course, a, a fantastic career, 3000 plus points, 1500 boards. Uh, you, you've done a great job. We're here with Jenna Cooper on the summit here on Midwest sports net. And I encourage you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. We talk a lot about small college sports and more through, the Midwest and beyond. Uh, Janet, you found your way to Wayland Baptist, and as a sophomore, the, the team 31-2, and two, won 27 straight, uh, got a couple of wins over the number one team in the country when it was Oklahoma City two times over Oklahoma City during that time. Unfortunately, the playoffs ground to a halt because of COVID, but in, in your time uh, at Wayland Baptist, you guys are 55-4. and four. Did you know that? I, I was aware. <laughs> I didn't know it was just four, but that yeah, that's crazy. That's that. That's wild. Talk about your time at Wayland Baptist. Wayland has been a really good place for me to be. I started out at Abilene Christian. Um, I was really excited to go D1, and it just didn't go my way. So coming back to Wayland, I'm being from Amarillo. I'm only an hour away from my family. And uh, the first two years, I was under Alicia Robertson, and she was an awesome coach. She got my confidence up um, from being D1 and coming here. It was really hard to transfer. Uh, My sophomore year was probably my favorite year of the two, obviously, because we didn't have to deal with COVID until the very end. Uh, It was awesome to play with a ton of um, seniors and juniors that year and learn from them. Last year was obviously not what we wanted. Uh, We only played 13 games and we lost in the first round of national tournament. We were all very off the whole year just because of COVID. And we had a few games canceled as soon as like we would be driving there and the games would be canceled. So that was just hard mentally. Yeah. And then this year is like really special for me because Alicia left, which I was very sad about, but then my dad actually is the new head coach. So that's pretty special to me. He was my coach in high school. He was my only coach before I went to Abilene Christian. And so kind of reuniting with him for my third year here, it's really cool. And I'm very thankful that I get to have another year here. Waylon has been um, really awesome for me and this year, especially. And, and I'm glad you said that. I wanted to give you a chance to introduce him because I know that is is special for you. Now, now uh, it seems like it's all coming to to play right now with with you as a team. Uh, you're doing well again, eleven and one. But the the program itself, which is 
you know, when it, in terms of wins, there's not a more prolific program in women's college basketball history. And the program itself met another milestone, 1700th, 1700th victory in a win a little bit earlier, a 76 71 victory over then number 23, Loyola. Talk about what it means to be a part of a program with a legacy and a history like that. I mean, it's obviously really cool. Um, when we won the 1700th win, uh, actually three games after that, we had a ceremony and a ton of ex flying Queens coaches, um, managers, anybody that had been connected actually came and we got to listen to a few of them talk and just, um, anywhere you go, you're going to meet a flying queen. You could be in Iowa. You could be in plain view, like wherever <laughs> you're at, there's a, there's someone that knows the flying Queens and it's really special to be a part of that. Um, I grew up around Wayland. My dad played here. My mom went to college here and then now my dad's the coach here. So I've been aware of the history a little bit more than some of the other girls on the team. So I think it's really cool to kind of bring back that tra tradition that we kind of lost the last few years. Um, I know it's been really important for us as a whole to connect with those X flying Queens because they have done so much for our program, so much for what we're doing. Um, we wouldn't be the flying Queens if it wasn't for them. We'd be just like everybody else and be the pioneers, like we're special. And it's because of those ladies that have came before. So I think that's really cool that we get to experience that and listen to them speak and for them to get to watch us be successful. I'm sure that's really fun for them too. It is. It's a, it's a fantastic legacy and it's really cool. And by the way, with your triple double now, uh, as if you didn't already have your name etched in with uh, some of those stars over the years, you definitely do right now I'm among the few to, to be able to say that as a part of the program, well, midway through the season now, again, 11 and one, number six in the country at this point in time. What are you all doing? What does it look like for you ahead to, as you push on through the season? What does it take then to make the make the postseason run you didn't get to make a couple years ago? Um, honestly, the last few weeks have been like practices have been a lot harder. Um, they've been amped up. I think we all realized after we took that loss to Concordia that we didn't want to be the same that we have been the last few years. We've always been good. We've always been successful, but we want to take that next step. And this year's team, we've really bought into practicing harder than we play. Practices have to be harder than we play because then when we get to a game, then we're prepared to for any kind of um, adversity that we have. That we have. Um, we have. I have a lot of great teammates. Uh, Kaylee Edgman, she's a super senior. This is her fifth year here. Um, I think she has really led us and helped us to kind of get over that hump. I feel like the last three games that we've played, we've really figured out who we are. We have established our identity and um, going into practices every day. I mean, we play some of the best players in the country just by practicing because we have so many great um, offensive players on our team. And so that makes us better defensively. Uh, going into Christmas break, we're five and on conference, 11 and one on the season. I'm hoping that we can just keep going. I wish we didn't have a Christmas break because we could just keep going, keep going, keep going and not have to take a break and go home. Like I just wish we could all stay. We're on a roll right now, but I'm very hopeful. I, it feels good to be where we're at right now. Well, congratulations again on the, uh, on the stats with the triple double. And of course, with the wins of the program now at six, 1,706 wins overall. And I know you want that number to just keep on climbing. Jenna Cooper, a, a junior with Wayland Baptist success to you all this season to the flying Queens. And, and we look forward to following you all as, as the, the season goes on. Thank you for being with us here today on the summit. Thank you so much.